Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com, and today I'll show you how to modify Pong X, which is a recent ensemble I uploaded to the Reactor User Library. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with Reactor content around once a week. So in the opening clip I just played for you, I made two modifications to the Pong X ensemble. Um, the first is I added a phaser flanger module, and the second is I added a master envelope to the output module. So let's take a look at the insides of the Pong X ensemble, and I'll show you how we can make these changes. So the instrument view is pretty easy to look at. We have the screen display and controller, which you should leave alone. Um, the pitch and gate, which you should leave alone, and the silencer module, which stops audio glitches uh, when loading new snapshots, which you should also leave alone. And finally, we have the control display, which is a stacked macro with 64 macros inside. So this is the area that we want to modify if we want to create our some new modules or edit existing ones. So the first thing to keep in mind is never delete the macros that are named container in the stacked macro. All those do is contain another macro for you. So you can hop inside them and delete whatever you want, but just don't delete them themselves because they keep the order of the stacked macro consistent so we always know which module we're looking at. So we have a bunch of inputs here, but you really don't need to worry about very many of them. Um, so the index and the bottom four inputs here are used to grab audio input from uh, other modules. And there's a macro that will do that for you automatically, so you don't need to really worry about them. And the clock input is um, something I included for efficiency's sake, but never actually ended up using, I don't think, so you don't need to worry about it. And then finally we have the P and G inputs, which stand for pitch and gate. And obviously those are useful for controlling oscillators and other things if you need those values. Alright, so each macro um, that we designed to fit inside a container should have a connectors, connections macro and the idea of this is it grabs our four audio inputs and it tells us whether or not they are turned on or off. And that's the only common element that we need to ensure that we're connected to the greater Pong X interface. And then each one of these macros um, has its audio sent to a send module which we can then use to route it back into any module that we like. All right, so let's modify one of these containers to contain a phaser flanger macro from the factory reactor library. So first we need to choose a uh, container to modify. I'm gonna modify one of the sequences. We have eight of them. We probably won't really need to use eight sequences at once. And you can find the container macro because it'll be in the same position within the stacked macro as the um, screen interface will show you when you press the add new button. So the uh, eighth sequencer then is going to be at the bottom, or sorry, at the far right of the seventh row. So we can just hop inside the sequencer macro and I'm going to add in the phaser flanger from the macro menu. And um, once that's in there, we can simply delete all of the other stuff and route the audio input to the flanger and the audio output from the flanger to the output of the macro. And unfortunately we only have one output that we can use here. So uh, we can't use the stereo phaser flanger effect. Phaser flanger is also mono by default 
and Pong X is polyphonic, so just make sure you set it to be polyphonic. And at this point in time, you should be able to wire it into a patch and have it work. Um, unfortunately, the one kind of downfall of editing Pong X is that making everything look consistent with the GUI is a huge pain in the ass. I kind of wish I had designed it a little simpler on that front, but it's too late now. So we can just wire a simple analog oscillator controlled by an envelope into the phaser to make sure that it works. We can uh, also change our audio input section here so that it tells you that it's the phaser input as opposed to uh, the modulation input for the sequencer. Just give you a little bit better of an idea of what's happening. Alright, so that's working well enough. And next let's jump in and modify the output module to have a amp knob and an input for a master envelope. So this is the simplest module of all. It simply takes one of the inputs and sends it directly to the output. So let's add a knob to this for the amp knob. And I'm going to grab one from the operator um, module. We already have a level knob here. So I'll copy that and paste it into our output. And this is a on the decibel scale, so we want to convert it to um, amplitude using an exponential module. And then we can multiply this by the input to control the amplitude of the output. So adding the amp knob is very simple. Um, and I also have a handy way to make knobs easy to modulate with an incoming audio source. And um, let's show you how to do that as well. So if we go into the LFO module, for an example, we have all these macros called knob mod. And these are just different ways to control the modulation of a knob with incoming audio signal. So there's a couple different types. Um, the one we're looking at right now checks to see if the um, if we're receiving audio from another source, and if we're not, it outputs a one, and if we are, it makes sure that the audio is at least equal to zero. If it's less than zero, it makes it equal to zero. And then, um, so if there is an incoming audio, we just clip it to be in the range from zero to one. And that's because this particular uh, modulation source is controlling frequency of our LFO, and we don't want to have a negative frequency. So we just make sure that it never goes below zero. And meanwhile, this macro right here um, does not check to see if the input is greater than zero. Um, and it simply um, gets multiplied against the width of the width knob of the LFO. So if you have the width set to say 0.5 and you have an incoming um, LFO affecting the width knob, then the range will be from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And if you were receiving on one that had to be greater than zero, then the range would simply clip at zero and go up to 0.5. So the one we want to use for our output module, um, we want to have the amplitude range from zero to one. We don't want to have a negative amplitude. So we want to clip the um, incoming uh, amplitude modulation to be always greater than zero or equal to zero. And we can just multiply that against the amplitude that we already determined. 
And so this will work perfectly if we want to, for example, uh, wire in an envelope to control the amplitude of the output. And once we do that, we can actually delete the envelope controlling the uh, oscillator. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple more steps if you want to make it look a little bit more in tune with the interface. Um, inside the connections macro, we have our four audio receive macros. If you hop into these, they have a multi-picture. So if the um, if that audio input is being used, you want to set that multi-picture to be visible in properties in the view section. And then you can delete the info and give a short blurb in the info on what the input actually does. So here now we've set up our second input to be the amp input and when you hover over it, um, it'll tell you what it does. So it's just a way to communicate what the inputs of a module do. It's also very simple to add labels for our knob. So I'm just going to show in structure one that already exists and copy paste it. And so there's labels of different sizes. I'm just going to create one with three letters. And the inputs um, need to correspond to the letter that you want to display. So 1 is equal to A, uh, M is the 13th letter of the alphabet, and P is the 16th letter. And together they'll spell AMP. All right, so there are some general pointers on modifying Pong X. There are a lot of things that could be changed to your benefit. Um, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and this ensemble. Um, and I'll be back next week with a new Reactor tutorial.